Hello there, welcome to the second of our SECA F9 uh, lecture recaps. This is a recap of our full course lecture. Don't forget you can go to our website and download the PDF of this mind map for free or any of our mind maps for free or buy the full course if you wish to. So performance measurement, the first thing we need to know how to do for performance measurement for F9 is the question approach. Remember, you're going to get a question in the exam and you need to know how to approach it. So the question approach is to set out a table. This is a key area in which setting out a table will really help because you can structure your example. Do all of your workings and put them into that table then. Once you've done that, you can discuss each ratio. So you've got a table, you've got all the workings in it. That'll probably get you half the marks. You can then discuss each ratio. Now, what does that involve? Well, it involves percentage movements. So you're saying it's moved by a certain percentage. Say how much that is. You're then saying, is that good or bad? And then you're comparing. Remember we said in the lecture, you can only compare year on year with the same business or with the industry average or another business in that industry. Those are the only two comparisons you can make. And then draw a conclusion. So that's your question approach. What are the sort of ratios that we're going to be looking at? Profitability, first of all. First one, return on capital employed. Remember, learn this. Profit before interest and tax over capital employed. Three ways we looked at to calculate capital employed. Number one, equity plus long-term liabilities. Number two, non-current assets plus net current assets. And number three, total assets less current liabilities. And remember, all three of these give you exactly the same figure. What does the return on capital employed tell us? Well, it tells us our underlying performance, and that's before finance. Because remember, we don't have the interest charge included. It, it's really telling us what is the return that we're able to generate on the investments within the business. So how have we invested those assets? What sort of a return are we able to get on them? Remember, gearing is irrelevant to return on capital employed and it's before tax, which means that you can compare it across tax regimes. But remember, when you're comparing only year on year and only to other businesses in the same industry or the industry average. And we looked at a detailed example on return on capital employed. Return on equity, profit after tax, less preference dividends. Remember that's distributable profit over ordinary shares plus reserves. And that's the equity of our investors. And really this tells us how well the shareholders funds are being used. How well are you using those share holders funds. Gearing will have an effect on the ROE and remember you can only compare with the same company year on year or industry averages and again we did a detailed example on the return on equity. Last one when it came to profitability we talked about the profit margins. We did an example using net profit, gross profit, all of the different profit margins but the operating profit is profit before interest and tax over turnover. Really, that's simply telling us what profit percentage are we making on each sale. Very important, again, to compare year on year. Moving on then, we talked about gearing. Remember that gearing has, first of all, capital gearing, and it can either be debt over debt plus equity, or it could be debt over equity. And it simply depends on what you're asked in the question. Remember, this measures your financial risk. Financial risk really is, think of this as the risk that you have too much interest to pay and you can't pay it. Financial risk. Remember that we always use market values. And again, we looked at a detailed example of this in the full course. So go over that if you're not sure of it. Interest cover was our profit before interest and tax over our interest. Remember, we want to know how many times we're covering the interest that's due with our profit. So how, how much profit are we making in relation to the interest that we have to pay on our debt? That was our interest cover then. Moving on to some of our shareholder ratios. 
we talked first of all about dividends and we looked at two ratios. We talked about firstly our dividend cover. Again, similar to our interest cover, how many times are we covering the dividends that we've announced? It's our profit after tax over our dividends. So comparing our dividends to the profits, how many profits or how much of our profit have we actually paid out? We also talked about the dividend yield. So this is really a measurement that investors will look at to compare with other investments. If they invest in this share, how much will they yield? What will the dividend payout be compared to what they had to invest? And it's dividends per share over the share price. Again, we did a detailed example, so go back over it if you're not share, sure. Lastly, we talked about the price to earnings ratio. Remember the calculation for this is the share price over the earnings per share. The price to earnings ratio tells us the market value to current earnings. So what are people willing to pay for the share in comparison to what that share can actually earn? So we're looking at the market value or the share price compared to the earnings that that share can actually generate. It's really a measure of market expectations of future earnings growth. And we went through a very detailed example to talk about the price to earnings ratio. Remember then that there are limitations to these ratios when we're thinking about measuring performance. Firstly, published accounts will usually be using these to do the calculations. Well, remember that they're on a historic basis. You're probably looking at results of something that happened maybe a year and a half ago. So it may not be relevant at this point in time. Also remember that the accounts are prepared on an accruals basis and that means that there can be manipulation of profit figures. So those are two limitations to using ratios to assess the performance of a business. So that was our second lecture on ACCA F9. Again, if you want to download the PDF of the mind map, go to the website and you can do that for free.